Update. I told my ex-husband my concerns about his girlfriend. Original post. My ex-husband and I are in our early 40s and late 30s and have been divorced for almost three years now. While he did not want to get divorced, we separated and have been co-parenting our two preteens amicably. He lives within five blocks from our old home, and while we have 50-50 custody, our kids freely bounce between our places and choose how they want to spend holidays. We've tried hard to create a sense of stability despite the change in our family situation and have standing tune-up therapy twice a year to make sure we're all comfortable with the arrangements. His recent partner Maria, 29 female, has been the only one to make past the six-month mark. And prior to this encounter, I would say that she makes him happy and is a pretty reasonable lady. She also has a very sweet and precocious nine-year-old son that we all adore, and generally I thought things were going well. I invited Maria to bring her son to my place if she would like him to join my kids in private language classes. She accepted, and this has been going on for a few weeks now and my kids adore him. Then last week, she said something to me that was surprising. She asked me when I would be moving my things out so that my ex and her could be able to cohabitat. I was taken aback and confused, asking her to clarify my current home. This home? And she nonchalantly told me, you don't need all this space for three people. We wouldn't have space at X's current condo. Her son looked so awful and embarrassed at this point that I was like, uh, this conversation would need to include my ex. My kids and I live in a brownstone that my ex and I purchased together 50-50, but that I have been renovating since before the divorce. My ex lives in a nice condo that's spacious, but is still a little bit of a man cave. Later in the evening, I got a text message from her son that was pleading for me to forgive his mom, that he is sorry for his mom, and to not tell my ex. I feel awful, but I think I should let my ex know this conversation occurred, and let him handle it. Would I be the a-hole if I told my ex-husband my concerns about his girlfriend? Edit, I'm the single owner of the house. My ex insisted throughout the divorce that I keep it. We do co-own his condo though, haha. <laughs> now for the top comments before reading the update. Why would you be co-owner of his condo? And why did you laugh after saying that? This whole thing does not add up. Ex may not be able to qualify to refinance the condo in just his name. Opie was probably laughing because girlfriend thinks X owns both homes, and girlfriend can throw Opie out at her whim, when this is not the case. Before our divorce, we owned both properties outright. Our divorce was very amicable, and he insisted I keep the brownstone. After the divorce, I had my lawyer help me transfer the brownstone deed and my ex signed the documents. He just never did that with a condo. I asked him a few times, and the answer has always been hand-wavy. I'm his ex-wife, so I'm not going to continue nagging him on something he's dragging his feet on. Not day hole. Your ex-husband should be the one having that conversation, so you absolutely need to share this with him. Weird that the nine-year-old has a better emotional gauge than his mom, though. He's a special kid in the best way, very mature and advanced for his age. I was very mature for my age, and it stemmed from trauma as did my understanding of situations, both social and emotional that should have been outside of my scope. I'm not saying that this kid is definitely traumatized, just that I've never met a former gifted kid that wasn't in some way. You would not be the a-hole, and I'm alarmed that a nine-year-old is already conditioned to apologize for his mother's behavior. I suspect girlfriend used her son's phone to manipulate the situation. I doubt this, because the girlfriend wasn't embarrassed at all. It was the son who reacted like this. I think this is just a very smart little kid with a high EQ, who has had to navigate the world with a parent who isn't nearly as savvy. Not the whole. It sounds like this needs to be discussed. Not necessarily because of her, but because it's obviously come up in their discussions. If you are divorced and still have shared property, I think that's what this says, then you will need to sort that out sooner than later. She wouldn't really be the issue. The ownership of the property is the issue, and it sounds like he's thinking about that if she brought it up. The thing is, I don't think it's been discussed between them at all. I think she may have just assumed. When we separated, he insisted that I keep the house and that I didn't need to buy him out. The house belonging to me is ironclad. I just got nervous and blurted out that we discussed it because her son was there. And now for the update. First off, some people ask why I laughed haha at the end of my edit that I owned half his condo. It was mainly out of uncomfortable irony. X is extremely driven and brilliant in his career, but disorganized in life. As for the update, 
I procrastinated bringing up what Maria said and basically told myself, assume best intentions slash awkward curiosity. My thought process was that. It's my home, and she'll have to cart me out here on the back of a hearse. I admit I was also nervous about raining on his happiness and did not want to be perceived as a bitter ex. The kids had a grand time at camp and a month or so ago later, we had family dinner with both sets of grandparents. My ex brought Maria and it started out great. Everyone welcomed Maria and her son. Maria was helping me finish up dessert in the kitchen and I was patting myself on the back for the goop-level blended family dynamic when she made an off-the-cuff comment about how she'd host parties here. X came in with the kids, overheard and asked, Oh, did Lowe's takes offer for you to host? Maria's son just burst into tears and started apologizing. It was genuinely one of the most awkward experiences of my life. Long story short, the entire family has learned that X had a vasectomy after divorce and is not looking to remarry anytime soon. Afterwards, I talked to him about the previous interaction, along with showing him the text messages and now they're no longer together. I am worried about Maria's son, although I recognize it's not my place. Unsure what I can do there. Poor Opie and X. Jesus. I cannot imagine what was going through the girlfriend's head. She thought she'd be the new wife, and he'd move his new family into the bigger place. So bizarre, as it doesn't even sound like younger new girlfriend at Opie's ex-hubby even had any conversations about cohabitating at all. Never mind cohabitate where. Head scratching at girlfriend's assumptions. The reaction from her kid being so immediate and so extreme makes me think that it's a pattern. Honestly, it made me suspect it had been discussed between them, and the ex-husband had said no, and that's why Maria tried to go behind his back and the kid was so upset by it. But even without that, the kid's reaction is hugely telling of something. I feel so bad for the kid. Feels like he was settling into an environment slash schedule where he got to do new stuff and see good people on a regular basis. Opie described her children loving him. And now it's all going to get taken away again? Not to mention, I feel like it can be a warning sign when very young children are described as being super mature and understanding for their age. I was that way growing up, but only because of emotional mistreatment slash neglect and parentification by the adults in my life. In the long term, it actually stunts you emotionally because you're stuck constantly trying to read the moods of other people and accommodating for what they want. You learn to ignore your own needs and never get to explore who you are as a person in one of the most important developmental phases of your life. Anyone get the sense Maria was looking to hit the jackpot? Also, it stands out to me that her son is so mature according to Opie. Kids grow up fast when they have an irresponsible parent. He was apologizing like she was his child acting a fool. Yes, unfortunately, kids do grow up fast when they have irresponsible parents. I personally know this for a fact. I feel for the little boy. Also, unfortunately, the ability to be mature for your age and having to parent your own parents does not translate you into a mature, functional adult. Most of the time, a young kid's maturity is complex trauma, molding them into still, quiet, vigilant people who know best when not to do anything. Knowing how to avoid triggering your emotionally immature parents does not make you a good romantic partner, say, or help you understand your own feelings to decide what you want. I'm not saying this to dump on a kid, but to empathize. I was also a bright, mature kid. What that actually meant was I sat still at school. Think my adult life had been fulfilling due to this great ability? Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling the mother of my boyfriend's son to run an upgrade on her parenting style? My boyfriend 32 male and I 35 female have been together for one year. They haven't got any kids. He has got a four-year-old son who lives with his mom, my boyfriend's ex. My boyfriend fetches his son every weekend, and he has recently introduced me to his son. We get along really well. He's sweet and very talkative. I have helped raise my nieces and nephews, so I think that I am good with kids. I don't believe in hitting kids. We talk things through and this has been my approach with my boyfriend's son too. He is always up to something, taking things apart or pressing buttons, but that's because he's curious. I always speak to him calmly and have started explaining things to him. So now, he asks me questions like, what does this do? What is this? And we explore things together so less things being broken. I recently received a call from the mother of my boyfriend's son, asking me to stop using all these new age phrases on her child. She said that my funny things are interfering with her parenting style. 
Apparently, the boy said, "Don't shout, mommy. Speak soft like Auntie." He also said, "Okay, take a deep breath, mommy." Whenever she would raise her voice at him. At first, I told her that I wasn't trying to interfere with her parenting style, but that that is how I deal with children. But she told me to go make my own kids and then teach them stuff. That hurt me, and I told her that maybe her parenting style needs an update. Now she refuses to let the child be around me, and she is starting to refuse my boyfriend access to his son too because of my interference. My friend thinks that I shouldn't have told her that her parenting needs an update and let my boyfriend handle this instead. And now I feel terrible. Am I the a-hole? Now for the comments. Not the a-hole. She's being ridiculous. Assuming that there's an actual visitation agreement, she cannot unilaterally just do that. X is being pissy. This is a type that will allow a child to be destroyed just to get back at the ex for whatever reason. Of course, she is probably demonstrating all the reasons she is an ex as well. My parents divorced when I was one and used me to hurt each other my entire life. Can confirm that none of this behavior is going to be good for the child. I was five, and my mom tried to use my little sister and I to hurt my dad and essentially extort him to pay an absurd amount of money. Chokes on her though. I moved in with my dad full time at eleven and became an attorney because I was so angry at what she had done. Not the a hole op. X is being super petty, and your parenting style sounds like mine. My son is three. He is an intelligent and curious little person trying to figure out the world. Patience is a must with small children, and you sound like a wonderful friend slash stepmom. Sounds like the four-year-old is more mature than his mother, and she doesn't like being reminded of the fact by the kid when she loses her temper. Your boyfriend needs to go to court and get a proper custody arrangement in place because his ex just deciding he doesn't get to see his son anymore, ain't it? Not the a-hole. That would be a fun one. Mother declaring that the father can't see his kid anymore because his girlfriend doesn't scream to it. Can you imagine telling the judge you want to change things because the new girlfriend is speaking to your child respectfully and gasp explains things to them? That kind of curiosity should be cultivated. Opie just found a non-destructive way to do it, and it sounds like he loves it. Sounds like he also appreciates not being screamed at for something. I mean, he's freaking four years old. Mistakes are gonna happen, and yelling or spanking doesn't teach him anything, except maybe that it's okay to yell and hit when you're mad. Most judges would laugh at the ex. Last story. Am I the a-hole for deviating from my niece and nephew's routine while we watch them? Instead of speaking to my sister-in-law because I thought it was unfair, our niece and nephews, 11 male, 9 female, and 8 male, were going to stay with us for a week while my husband's sister and her husband went to a wedding out of state and made a vacation out of it. Sister-in-laws always got in parenting inspiration from celebrities and online blogs. The first clue something was off was when our niece came to us and told us that our son, 14 male, wasn't giving her his switch to play first. I explained to her that the switch is his, so she had to ask nicely for a turn, and it was up to him to share. When it was time for the eight and nine-year-old's bath time, I told them to get ready for their baths. When our niece shouted, "I'm first!" and went to get her stuff, at bedtime, I asked them what story they wanted to read, and again, it was our niece that answered. The following day, they wanted to watch a show, and I told them to agree in one. Our niece went. We're watching the show. I told her that she needed to talk to her brothers to find something all three of them agree on. Her response was, "Boys always pick everything." So I took that to mean that her brothers often pick and let her put on the show. When it was dinner time, my husband called everyone to the kitchen and was plating food up for the kids on a first come first serve basis. Our son got in there first, and our niece told him that he needed to wait because she and Auntie go first because girls go first. My husband explained that at dinner time, dinner is served as you get in the kitchen or take turns, so no one goes first all the time. Bath time and bedtime story was the same thing. She wanted to go first and pick first, so I told her since she got to go first with both the night prior, one of her brothers got to go first that night. She said that she was supposed to go first because girls first, and that's how their parents do it. Here's where I may be the a-hole. I explained to her that in our house we share and we take turns. That's how things went for the next two days until their parents called and she told my sister-in-law that we weren't following the rules. I talked to sister-in-law and she was upset that I changed the kids' routine without talking to her about it first because she was just trying to provide an environment for her daughter where she would take precedence. 
I told sister-in-law she never mentioned these rules and routines when she asked us to keep the kids. And even if she had, I wouldn't have agreed to them since they would, and have, impacted my own child. I also told her she's not providing an environment to make her daughter feel valued and special. She's raising her to be entitled and being unfair to her sons. The following day, my husband's parents showed up to pick up the kids. And since then, his relationship with his sister has been strained. Am I the a-hole for deviating from their routine instead of bringing it up to my sister-in-law first? Not the a-hole. Your sister-in-law is sexist and is raising your niece to be sexist as well. At least hopefully the nephews will remember which family they can turn to when they go no contact in high school. Not the a-hole. This has nothing to do with celebrity-style parenting. It's just good old-fashioned favoritism. Not the a-hole. Yikes. That's a crazy way to raise a daughter. Your sister-in-law isn't doing her any favors. She'll be shocked when she enters the world as an adult and realizes nobody cares about her rules slash opinions. Not just the daughter. What a crazy way to raise their sons. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. Her thought process makes no sense. It's fine to make sure your daughter knows she's valued and special. It's definitely not okay to teach her that because she's a girl, she'll always get to be first or always get her way. You're correct. She's just teaching her to be an entitled brat. I don't know. Some people overcorrect. You'd be surprised at how many women have grown up in houses where they were second-class citizens. Doesn't make the sister correct, but I can see how it came about, especially in certain cultures and corners of the world. The problem with that culture is that there are first- and second-class citizens at all, not who the second-class citizens are. 